Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Episode. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk to you about the latest episode of Wolf Pack. It was called Incendiary. And as the episode begins, we see a young boy standing in the middle of the woods listening for something. And it would seem to be Harlan in a flashback. When he can't seem to hear whatever he's listening for, his father sends him off into the woods alone on the idea that being by himself and not focusing so much on trying to hear whatever it is will enable him to hear it passively. It seems to work. And he hears something that inspires him to run away <laughs> and then hide from what he hears. From his hiding space, he sees a wolf approaching him and growling. Back in the present, Harlan's standing on the porch, listening, talking with Harlan, Everett, and Luna. Blake says that she thinks the reason that the wolf hasn't attacked them and instead attacked the cop that was bothering them. And the reason it grabbed her brother is because they had both hurt one of them which the cop did when he messed with Harlan and which the little brother did when he slapped Blake. They suspect that the reason that the other kid was taken or killed or whatever by the werewolf, even though he was also bitten and was theoretically part of the pack, is that he had a broken leg and was therefore too weak to actually be part of the pack, which I don't understand because it seems like the werewolf bit him in order to make him a, a wolf, but then didn't want him to be with the other wolves because he was wounded. But if I remember correctly, he was wounded when he bit him. So like, what? I don't, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe it makes sense that way. I don't know. I have to, I have to, I'd have to look back. Anyway, then they each start getting calls from the voice. When Harlan answers it, it plays a tone over the phone to mess with his hearing. Next, Everett answers, and it reads some kind of creepy prose to them all that would seem to be about a werewolf, which turned out to be an ancient Greek fable about the first werewolf named Lycan. Then it tells them that they have to stop the werewolf before it keeps killing, which apparently it's doing for them. And then he shares a location of, I guess, where the next attack is gonna be on Everett's phone. Upon arriving at the location, the kids discover an overturned car with a woman inside who's wounded and who apparently witnessed the werewolf. And then they witness the werewolf take the driver away, pull her right out of the car as they're trying to help her. So they take the hell off. <laughs> They then decide to try to figure out who it's going to go after next so they can stop it from killing. But they also say it's killing for them. So what I want to know is, who is it killing for them on days when no one's bothering them? And why did it attack the people in the car? I'm confused about that. Anyway, Sarah Michelle Geller's character shows up following a lead in the arson case right to the high school because apparently one of the devices used to start the fire was printed on the school's 3D printer. And that points them to the son of the dead firefighter that Harlan was hooking up with. She asks him what he knows about his father's death, which apparently occurred 17 years prior in a similar fire to the one happening now. And she thinks there's at least one connection between the two fires, namely him, as well as a couple of other students. Next, for some reason, Harlan goes to buy what it would seem to be our drugs from some guy at a gym, where we also find Everett working on his strength, which Harlan had suggested he do previously, as a remix or cover of Stroke by Billy Squire plays for some reason. I, I didn't understand that necessarily. Anyway, Everett ends up being able to bench press a whole lot of weight, but then when Harlan tries it, he can't do it. After this, the boys have a chat and theorize that there might be a way to turn Harlan and Luna's real dad back into a regular wolf and then maybe even back into a person. Next, our heroes suspect that the people the werewolf might be trying to kill now are their acquaintances from school, Phoebe and those folks. So they go to a party to try to be nice to them to throw the werewolf off. But Luna seems to fail pretty straight away at being nice to them when she calls one of the party goers an asshole, the guy that asked her to draw for him previously. Soon, except for Luna, they're all doing mushrooms, the drugs that were brought there by Harlan and one other party goer. Sarah Michelle Geller's character takes her cop friend and the park ranger to the building where the kids had gone to observe the fire previously, and they're escorted through it by the other park ranger person and the security guard. Sarah Michelle Geller's character and the dad have a conversation about how he came to be the parent of our heroes, and she ends up revealing that her son died in a fire. Back to the party, because it's a pool party, Blake puts on a bikini that was brought for her to the party by Luna, and she goes in the pool, which prompts Everett to do Likewise, this is probably my favorite moment of the episode. <laughs> Star Michelle Geller's character, whose name I'm going to memorize at some point, and the park ranger dude, the dad, surmised that from this vantage point on the building, the arsonists set off the fire in two locations in the woods simultaneously, 
by delivering the incendiary devices to the spots by drone and then activating them remotely. Back at the party, Harlan chats up and exchanges some graphic talk with his crush, I guess, as Luna finds the guy that she called an asshole playing piano. After thinking that he wasn't very good at it because he was just tinkering around and trying to show him how to play something, he demonstrates that he is in fact an accomplished pianist. Then Blake and Everett have a chat during which he plays some pink and brown noise for her as an example of what he listens to when he tries to calm himself from his anxiety attacks before explaining to her that he really wishes she had a phone because he thinks about her all the time and wants to text her things that he wants to tell her, but he can't because she doesn't have a phone. And these, of course, are things that he struggles to tell her when he's with her in person. When she asks him what he wants to tell her, he kisses her, after which she tells him that he didn't need her to have a phone in order to do that, and then they kiss some more. My second favorite part of the episode. <laughs> Back at the building, Sarah Michelle Gellar's character gets left by herself at her own request in front of a door for which the key must be retrieved from elsewhere. So the security guard goes to get the key, and I guess everybody else just goes back to what they were doing before. I don't know. Back to the party, suddenly, Phoebe tries to kick Blake and Everett out. I'm not sure why she suddenly wanted to do this. But then Austin, the guy that Luna thinks is an asshole, or thought was an asshole, takes the message that she left Harlan about thinking that Blake slashed her tires and turns it into like a dance mix and plays it over the speakers after Harlan sends it to him. At which point, Blake throws his phone in the pool to stop it from playing. And when he dives after it, which I don't really know why you would, because it's a dead phone at this point. Although I suppose you wouldn't just leave it there either. I don't know. Anyway, he encounters the werewolf at the bottom of the pool. Because for some reason, it's in the pool and got there without anybody noticing in the middle of a party. After which it comes out chasing him and everybody runs. Back to the building, the security guard and Sarah Michelle Geller's character discover the werewolf's body pile down at the bottom of that shaft, which I'm not really sure why they didn't smell before they got anywhere near it. And when he asks her who or what would have done that, she explains quite point blankly that it's a werewolf. And as he seems incredulous, she bashes him in the head with her maglite, killing him and shoves him into the pile of bodies, which is an interesting turn of the screw, as they say, or the plot. And that's where the episode ended. So I find that I am liking the show a lot more than I did in the beginning. It seemed very silly in the beginning, but we're like five episodes in now, and I think they're, they're telling a good story at this point, even though some of it is a little weird, like why is it killing for them and why did it go after the, the kids at the party when they hadn't done anything to them in days? Like, if it was going to do it, why didn't it do it before? Like, is it just slow and getting around to everybody? And it's a huge pile of bodies in that shaft. You know, it's not like one or two. And how is it that all of those people crossed our heroes in some way? I, I don't understand exactly what's going on and who's the voice on the phone. But I don't know. Maybe they'll make it all make sense. I, I just don't find the show as silly as I found it. In the beginning, I think they're doing a good job of showing that our heroes are coming together to gel as a group, which was clunky at first, as it would be. And I'm excited by the fact that they finally revealed that not all is as it seems with Sarah Michelle Gellar's character, that she's up to something and that she is not necessarily, and apparently isn't, a good guy. <laughs> so I think that's interesting. Maybe she's the voice on the phone? I don't know. I don't know. But I think they're they're building to something that could turn out to be pretty cool. And I'm finding that I, I find the show less silly, as I said, than I did in the beginning. And it's actually a pretty decent show, if a little incredulousness inducing, if incredulousness is a word. But yeah, I'm liking where it's going. I liked the bikini stuff. I thought that was good. Um, <laughs> The CGI continues to be horrible, though, and I really hope they say something about how the werewolf got into the pool <laughs> and what it was doing under there. I, this is very strange. But anyway, not the worst show in the world. It's pretty decent, so I'm liking it. And I'm going to get out of here for now, but I will be back to review the next episode once it's released. There's only a couple more left. Until I return, I wish you peace and long life.